What's up, Simonics, and welcome back to a new, really, really long and big guide about using Ionic with the latest versions of Firebase and Angular Fire. So we're gonna use Angular Fire version 7 and Firebase 9.x to build an Ionic application with capacitor image selection, uh, with file upload, with user uh, authentication. We're gonna create accounts. We're gonna see how everything works together in one really actually simple application, uh, but still it's so powerful, really. Um, I Whenever I see uh, something like this, where you can connect a backend in like 20, 30 minutes to an application, you get the whole system of a database and user authentication in place, it really blows my mind. So I'm super excited about this video once again. If you got any question about the usage of Firebase or uh, any other functionalities, or maybe even Superbase, let me know link to the tutorial right below the video and of course if you didn't know i run the ionic academy my place to help you with everything ionic so you can build amazing ionic apps for ios android and the web go check it out and now let's create an epic ionic application with the latest version of firebase All right, a lot to do today, so let's get started with our application. We're gonna start, as always, with a blank template, and we can generate a new page and two additional services. The page will be used for login and registration, uh, and the services will either be for the authentication stuff or uh, for the image upload stuff in the end. Then you can also go ahead and install the Capacitor camera plugin since we will need this for capturing images later. And if you also want to run the application on your browser, uh, you could install the Ionic Progressive Web App Elements package. Um, for that package to work, you also need to add a little uh, import to your main TS that looks like this, and then call the define custom elements function. But that's really only for the uh, Progressive Web App stuff. If you're not interested in this and only want to run the application on a device, you don't really need that. Then we could already add Angular Fire, Firebase connection to our app, but I just want to quickly recap what we need. So you need a Firebase project uh, to connect to your application. I already created one. You can just go to the console, click plus and create one. And when you're in your uh, overview, you should have a button to add an application or add app. So I already did this. I just called this web and this will give you um, a snippet that looks like this. So you might or might actually not need this in the end, um, but that's definitely what you want to do up front. There are a few other things that you want to do. So you want to also go to the authentication tab and click enable authentication for the email and password provider. So that's what we're going to use today. We will not use our social authentication, but feel free to leave a comment if you're interested in this and we might um, do something about this. So doing native uh, login with Google or something like that in combination with Firebase. But today email password should be enabled. Next step is Firestore database. Here you'll also have to click get started uh, and then it will show you some dummy rules. And yes, those dummy rules sh uh, should be fine. So um, I think you can select between limited access and just private access. Just go with the access uh, for uh, everyone with a um, until a specific timestamp. So that basically means everyone can write to the, your database in reality, you want to have real rules that protect your data, but for now, I think it's fine if your uh, rules look like this. Finally, we also go to storage and here as well, click get started. And for the rules, in this case, we can actually pick the rules, uh, which also I think are the default that every request to read or write the data needs to be authenticated. Um, because we will have users later uh, and only those users will write uh, to our storage, so that should be fine. Okay, so storage, database, authentication should be in place and you should have added an application uh, here to your app. Now you can run the schematic and this actually got a lot better over the time. So in the past I always had problems, some installs didn't run through, uh, but now it actually asks a lot of questions. So I took a screenshot of all the things I answered. Uh, can we make this big like this? Um, 
So using package manager, that's fine. Uh, the package Angular Fire 7.2 will be installed. Is that fine? Yes. That will first of all update your package JSON. So I also want to show my package JSON. Uh, so you can either take a screenshot of the versions used. So if you're using this in a year, most likely the versions have changed again. Today, most important for this video is Angular Fire 7.2. Uh, and Firebase, oops, Firebase 9.4, 9.6, uh, something like that. So now you should have seen my package JSON capture the screenshot. Um, and the installation, the schematic here will actually ask for a few more things. So what features would you like to set up? And it's interesting. I didn't thought this would have any uh, relation to our project, but it actually does. It does a lot of cool things. So since we want to have authentication, the Firestore database and cloud storage for our files, go ahead and select them with space and then press return. Um, allow Firebase uh, CLI to collect information, do whatever you want. And then you will uh, get an authorization code from your browser which helps you to uh, load from a list of your Firebase projects the one um, that should be connected. And now it gets really interesting. Because of this connection, I wasn't really sure why this connection was necessary, but because, or I think because of that connection, this schematic was actually able to update my environment files with the stuff that we usually do in these kind of tutorials afterwards. So it puts all the information for my um, Firebase project right here into the environment and as well goes into the app module and injects all the services that we selected. So this is the standard line to initialize the Firebase app and then we got authentication, Firestore and storage. Those are exactly the three topics that we selected right here. So the schematic really um, got a lot better over the time. Okay, uh, I hope also it runs for you and you're not encountering any problems. Uh, just in case, if, it, if you get any problems, you have to do the environment fun alone uh, and you have to update your app module, which is now using the Angular Fire 7 uh, syntax to uh, inject these things. So you see, we're only using the functions uh, right here, provide auth, provide fire store, provide storage. Uh, you always need to be careful with Visual Studio Code. It usually recommends you uh, as well in these places. Um, let's see, get auth, um, okay. Looks like not this time, but in a lot of other places it recommends also the just plain Firebase package. And you wanna make sure that you import that stuff from Angular Fire just to stay consistent. Okay, I think that's most of the upfront setup. We've covered the main TS. Um, there's just one more thing and that's the app routing. So right now you will have a, the home path, you will have a login path. We're gonna switch this up a bit. We're gonna make login the initial page. We're gonna make home the second entry and a little redirect to our initial login page. Now we can already get started with something pretty cool uh, and that is authentication guards. Um, let's just do this up front so we can protect our uh, application. Usually you have something like this. You can activate, you put in authentication guard, and then for uh, Angular Fire, you could have some data object here with additional information. But that's actually, uh, a, there's a way to make this a lot easier using the spread operator and the can activate, uh, hello, the can activate function. Um, so let me just bring in the import that can activate from Angular Fire Auth Guard. And now we can just put in here a specific pipe. And that's pretty interesting because we're gonna do the same procedure now for the home page and for the login page. And we're gonna define two different cons up here. Oops. No, I messed up everything. What we wanna do is we wanna have something to redirect unauthorized users to a page, in our case, to the empty page, because that's our login page, or this might be the login path in your application. And we wanna redirect locked in users directly to home, so they don't even end up on the login screen. So now we can uh, inject this, uh, actually we need to use this, so unauthorized, this goes here. That means if we access the login page and we are already logged in, we will be redirected to home. 
If we try to access home, for example, from the browser and we're not authenticated, we will be redirected as unauthorized users to the login page. That guard existed before, um, but this is now the new syntax. Um, actually, it, I think it looks mostly like the syntax before, uh, but anyhow, let's take a look. Uh, your application now should display your login page. In my case, I made a tiny little change to the login page already, but we're gonna see that in a second. Let's open all the relevant files for this now. So I just changed the name, really just changed the name of the login page. On this page, we wanna do the authentication stuff now. That's now the second part. So we finished all the settings, the environment for our connection between the Firebase uh, project and Ionic. And now we wanna create new users. For that, let's head first of all over to our authentication service. And I've added a few things that we will need. We need register, we need login and log out. And the most important part is now injecting the auth provider right here from Angular Fire Auth because this will be necessary in all the calls that we do because those calls now look like this. Uh, for example, for register, we need the create user with email and password. And now see what happens. I click the first one. It will directly take this function from Firebase auth. And that's really not what I want. Uh, we want to use Angular Fire. Uh, so we're going to select the function from here. It's really just proxying those functions uh, as far as I know. But really, we want to do it like this. And then we're going to just pass what we need, authentication provider, email, and password. And then we already got our first uh, registration function. Now, um, this function is interesting. Damn, so much information. Um, as it will throw an error if the registration fails. And that's kind of mm, problematic. Uh, because it just fails in here. And if we use it as a promise in the login page, we would never really see the result. So therefore, I came up with a little uh, tiny change. So let me bring this in. We're just going to put this block inside a try catch. So we're going to try this and we're going to return the user. If we catch an error, we're just going to return null. That means if we use now register as the promise, uh, we can check if we get back a user or null. That is our indication for a successful or failed registration. And the same now for login. We can really just copy paste this as we just need to switch this for a different function. This is now sign in with email and password. Once again, make sure you got the import right from this package. And for logout, we just return the sign out function from, uh, yeah, and injecting the auth provider. That's already our simple authentication service and everything that we need to uh, log in users and to create users. Now let's head over to the login page on which we first of all uh, inject the reactive forms module into the module. The reason is simple, we want to create a login form and therefore uh, this usually works the best. Now we could also maybe do this side by side so we can see what's going on. The only change I made so far to the login page is I added a few uh, or injected a few services here, the form builder, so we can create our form. Um, our robot just added this code already because it's like boilerplate and we want to focus on the Firebase stuff. Uh, I added functions so we can easily access the controls from our reactive form. This will be helpful to displaying errors within our HTML. And then I injected the Angular, uh, the Ionic loading controller and alert controller, our very own authentication service and the Angular router so we can route the user forward after uh, the login. So the only thing we now need to implement here is register and login. And in fact, that's going to be so super easy. Um, actually, it's just, it's really just one line. So it's just calling the authentication service with the value of our reactive form. The register function will extract the email and password, do everything else, and then our user is uh, created or not. But of course, to make this, um, well, a bit more pretty, we're gonna start by adding a loading controller first. And maybe we can also do this uh, until we get to the HTML. 
and of course dismiss the loading after this line and then we should check if we actually got a user back that means we have a successful registration or if we didn't get a user back so if we got back a user we can use our router and call navigate by url to move to the inside area of our application which in our case is under the home path i also recommend to use replace url true in cases where you move from a login page to a inside page or the other way around simply because this will uh, replace the history and just completely reset the page uh, in the other case we're going to just show a little alert um, let's do it like this registration failed please try again i just added a quick function here uh, which uses the alert controller so i don't need to do this twice in fact most of the things we do within register and login are already the same we can really just copy this once again to login then we change this uh, to login um, and we just say login failed please try again later we could really simplify those two functions into one function that should definitely be possible <laughs> but anyway now let's build the view uh, now we make this a bit smaller and go over here so we can now connect a form to our uh, the form group that we just created form group um, the name was I think credentials and we're going to use ng submit here to directly trigger the login if a button within that form uh, calls the or has the type submit so if you have a button like this within your form um, it will just trigger the login uh, it will just trigger the action of the form so that's what i wanted to say if we have another button in here with register we could just use type button and then it won't trigger the ng submit action of the form little additional uh, knowledge now let's create the items we just need two for email and password uh, within those items uh, we can now use uh, a fill so that's new with ionic version 6 you could use solid or outline uh, which works pretty nice if you also add an uh, label within that input that's floating and then moves up into that outline really looks great on uh, Android material design besides that we got the input connected to email and we got a note in the error slot which is also new with ionic 6 but we only display this if the email field is dirty and touched and if it actually contains any kind of errors so we've seen this logic in i think my big starter template guide um, by preparing our get functions here inside login page we made it really easy to access the credentials and the errors otherwise you get something like credentials dot controls dot email dot dirty and that uh, three times really blows up your code so if we hit save we should see the first uh, element we already got two buttons down here that's pretty cool um, we could finish them as well so this one should call uh, create account uh, we're going to use expand full on those buttons as well uh, for the first button we uh, don't need any functionality for the click handler because we are having a type submit but what we want is we want to disable it until our credentials form is valid so now we can also see the error or the uh, error slot of the ion input in action pretty cool um, how does it actually look on iphone okay so the um filled solid doesn't make any uh doesn't affect the ios styling but of course the error node is available here as well that's cool okay let's add the second item that's going to be mostly the same like before input type password form control name password to connect it to our reactive form and once again the node in the error slot now checking the password field and checking for any errors and then just displaying a little message so now we got our simple uh login form up and running uh let's do some testing let's do something like this and do something failed and we see registration failed please try again that's already great uh, you should always uh, test those cases because uh, i usually also test the successful stuff 
uh, and then it just works so <laughs> make sure you test with a really fail in the beginning now let's create an account and this will bring us to my profile yeah that password was definitely unsecure it was just for testing but what's more interesting now is that our account seems to be created. Can we confirm this? Let's check the authentication of our project and we see there is the user, the user ID. We have no other functionality connected to this, but we uh, see that we got that user. Now, one problem you will encounter is that you can perfectly refresh that page. Well, you can't go to the login page for more testing anymore. The reason is that we implemented those cool uh, cool guards uh, right here inside our app routing, which means if we are locked in, we will be automatically redirected to home, which is in reality cool for testing, not so cool. So let's go to the home page and quickly add a button up here. Uh, so let's use, uh, come on, eh. slot start. We want to do a lockout icon, uh, slot icon only name i think it's lock dash out so i tried everything i tried sign out sign in together or with a dash let's hope this is right uh, on the home page i also just got the steps in here so we can now just call our authentication service logout you might have to inject this uh, real quickly into your constructor don't care about the profile we will get to that in a second um, and we should definitely await that call and then use the router to navigate by URL. We just want to go to the initial page slash and we'll also call replace URL true once again. And then we should be able to go back. And now we can also test if we can go to home, which we are not allowed. So the guards are working really, really great. Now let's check. Um, we have created this account. Uh, with the registration and I all uh, immediately moved us forward into the home area. That's because if you do a registration with Angular Fire, you're usually automatically signed in. Unless you have some kind of other logic to confirm your email or enter a code. In that case, um, this process might work differently, but this is the basic version. Let me know if we want to do something about that in the future as well. Um, besides social authentication, maybe we can do something like uh, phone number authentication or one-time password, something like this maybe. Anyway, let's give it a try. Let's do a failed login <laughs> just for testing. Okay, login failed and let's do it with the right credentials and we lock in. No, I definitely don't want to do this. So we're now, how long are we in this video? 20 minutes, a bit more than 20 minutes. And this is the time it took us to build a complete, basically complete user authentication system with Ionic and Firebase. I really for forget about this sometimes, but this is just amazing. Um, this real stuff really takes a long time. If you develop your own Nest API, perhaps you have some boilerplate code or any kind of other API, uh, user authentication, and you implement the JSON web token stuff in your Ionic app, this takes a lot longer, like at least three, four, five times longer. Um, and you don't need to know about anything backend related. I found this really amazing and that's one of the big things I like about Firebase that I also like about Superbase. Um, and with that, I think we can focus on the next topic because authentication, creating users works so far. Our app is protected using the guards within the app routing. And we can close the login stuff, the auth stuff, the login stuff, and confidently move into the next area, which is image upload. For this, we're going to bring up the avatar service. Um, so we implement the functionality once again up front, and then we're going to do the rest of the logic from our pages. Now, uh, what we want to do is we simply want to take the user ID to upload a file, uh, could be an avatar to the storage. And at the same time, we want to link that file uh, within the cloud Firestore. So in most cases, you actually create a user document within cloud Firestore here already after a user registration with potentially more information or um, 
um, sometimes you're using a cloud function that would be more secure to, instead of doing this from your function. We haven't done this, but it won't be a problem. You will see. So what we're going to do is we're going to first implement a function to, in general, get the user profile. And for that, we, of course, need the unique user uh, ID. So let's grab this uh, from the auth provider. We can get the current user. The user object is pretty cool. It already contains the email if you want that as well. And then we can access a document. That process changed a bit with Angular Fire 7 and Firebase 9 as well. So you might have seen this in my previous video about accessing collections and documents. All of this is now a function. You want to access a document, you got to call this document uh, function. We're going to inject the Firestore provider and then a path to that file. In our case, we're going to look inside users slash uh, I made this cool thing that I really love. <laughs> I made it again. <laughs> uh, we're going to look in users uh, and use the user unique ID. Thanks for that as well. OK, that is the reference to a document within our Firestore database. And now we want to return that data. So we use the doc data function once again. I'm always using it from Angular Fire up here. And we pass in the user document reference and um, yeah, I think we actually don't need anything else. It should be fine. Okay, the upload image function is a bit more interesting. Um, so we assume that we get a camera file, which is just a photo uh, from the capacitor camera. I'm using those types, so we can be pretty safe about that already up front. And the process is, once again, mostly the same like it was before, only that we now use functions for all the upload stuff. So we're going to start again by creating a path to the file that we want to upload to storage. Um, we want to put the file into the folder uploads slash user ID slash profile PNG, or you could also use a unique name. Then we go ahead and create a reference to that path by using our storage provider that we injected and the new path. Once again, check here everything from Angular Fire. And now the fun begins, and I'm going to wrap this once again in the try catch block, um, simply because uh, otherwise we won't be able to see any problem in our UI and you would get problems dismissing, loading. So we're going to do it like this. What we want to do now is we want to await, upload, and then we can see there are three functions that you could use to upload. You could use upload bytes to upload a blob, bytes resumable, actually not sure, I haven't used this before, um, or what we want to do, we want to use the uh, upload string. Because we will simply capture the image or select a photo as base64 string and then upload it and then uh, everything is pretty easy. But of course, if you want to convert bigger files to a blob, if you plan to record a video and then upload that, um, you could still uh, use the same procedure. You might just have to convert the camera file from the URI that you get back to a file on the file system to the actual blob. We've done this in other... Um, Tutorial, just check out the capacitor image capturing guide, something like this. Okay, but in our case, we're just gonna upload a string, so that makes life really easy. I'm gonna pass in the storage reference. The value is now the camera file dot base64 string. We love interfaces. Uh, the format is, I think, base64. And base64 URL, you can even select this. I think it's base64. I feel like it's base64. <laughs> uh, and that's already everything we need. Um, now we could also do um, we could also use the the promise here. Uh, I think we could also hook into the upload progress because that was definitely possible in the past. But right now, since we're handling everything in the service, we're not really interested in that. So what we're going to do instead is, at this point, the file is already uploaded to Firebase Storage. But from this result, even though it's an upload result, you don't really get the right path to that file. Instead, what we can do now is call another function called get download URL 
using the storage reference from before. And that will really give us uh, the plain image URL to the file within uh, Firebase storage. With that URL, we can now pass this back to our service or since we wanna kinda persist those changes, we will update the user document reference by using the same logic that we used to access the profile and then we're gonna call set doc to write the image URL data to that reference. Now I'm gonna um, return the, I'm gonna return true, I think because uh, this promise actually doesn't return a lot. So I'm gonna just return true and then the error case, I'm gonna uh, return null or false. Well, true, null, it's kind of the same in the end. Uh, for our check. And with that, we have our upload function for Firebase in place. The rest is gonna be easy peasy. We will head over now to the homepage. We already got the lockout stuff in place. We got some services injected and we got the profile data. Now let's fill that profile data right here in the beginning. So let's set profile, um, actually not like this. We're gonna do it this dot avatar service, get user profile, subscribe. And then we're gonna set this start profile to the data. Good, good. Um, we could now already display something. So let's give this a try inside the home page. Um, I'm gonna just bring this in for now because we're really not interested in building a UI today. Uh, what we want in here is, I made this little preview. We're gonna add a bit of CSS in a second. Um, most important, we got the ion avatar, which we will trigger our change image function. If the profile data is set and contains an image URL, we're gonna display this image here using source. In the else case, we're gonna use the placeholder avatar. So today I, uh, there's a typo, placeholder avatar. Um, use the ng template with the template reference in here for the if else. Um, perhaps you've seen this before. I sometimes use it, sometimes I just make another ng if, um, but that's just displaying this in the else case. Now, finally, we need a bit of CSS for this um, because right now it will look like this. Uh, we don't have an avatar, so it would display select avatar. So let's also get into this file and I will set the width of the avatar to something a bit bigger. Uh, and I'm gonna set the preview to display the items in the center and the fallback will be, yeah, well, a fallback avatar with its own size and making sure that we got select avatar here in the center. Okay, uh, the last missing piece is the change image function and that's gonna be very easy as well. We first of all, capture an image using the capacitor camera. Uh, we can use all those interfaces. Um, we'll allow editing faults. We will use a base 64 image and I will set this to photos because I hope this won't break my recording and my video. I really hope. Okay, uh, once we got this, maybe let's log out the image. And if we got an image, we gonna call our uh, function to upload the image. Uh, we're gonna do this again, wrapping everything with the loading controller. And if after that we don't have a result, uh, we should display some kind of error or you're gonna handle this however you want. Uh, but especially during testing makes, makes sense uh, to display yourself a little alert. And I actually think we are already done. So let's give this a try now. I'm gonna select uh, an image like this. Looks great for an avatar. Okay, we got the image data locked out here from Capacitor and we see the image changed. Now, why did it change? Um, we uploaded the image. Let's first of all confirm that. So we can go to storage, we can go to uploads, and we see the user profile image uh, right here, profile PNG. On top of that, we can go to our Firestore database and select users, our user node, and the image URL was written in there. And because we got this connection up here to get the user profile, which is not observable, 
This will emit new data because that's really the cool stuff about Firebase. It's a real-time database. Um, Firestore as well, uh, although the other sounds like it only is the real-time database. No, Firestore as well is real-time as well. We get the new data because that document was updated and so we see that image. And well, I think that's it because it's pretty easy to capture the image with capacitor. And the whole upload logic is also only just a few lines. Um, I found this pretty cool. And I think uh, this will work in like 90% of your cases. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about with you. Um, and that is the native implementation. So we installed the capacitor camera plugin. If you want to use the capacitor camera plugin, you're going to have to change your iOS info plist. Uh, you can do this right here from your code editor and what you need is the key So it starts here and ends here this block for the NS camera usage description the NS folder library usage description uh, Whatever <laughs> so you're gonna have to add those three otherwise your application will crash and for Android We basically need the same so we can go into app source main Android manifest heat somewhere to the bottom and there should you uh, see only the first entry, but you should also add read external and write external storage. I was just thinking if this is maybe not necessary for the camera. Um, um, I'm not sure if it is. Let's quickly check it out. Official plugins, camera. Yeah, you should do it for Android as well. So yeah, I confirm you need this step for Android as well. And now, there's one important thing. If you already ran the application, you did everything like I did, uh, you are so happy you're developing app and you're building it for iOS and you see a white screen in your iOS device. I've been there <laughs> and I thought, no, this can't be real. But there seems to be a little bug uh, within uh, the Firebase SDK related to capacitor, at least in the version that I was using, 9.4 or 9.6. But there was a fix for this. And the fix was to get into the function to uh, where we provide the authentication and really use a function in here. And what we want to do in here is we want to check if capacitor, so we can inject this, is native platform. So if we're running on a native platform, we're going to do something special. In the other case, it means we run on the web. We will just return get authentication uh, like we had on that line before. But in case of capacitor, we're going to return uh, initialize auth. And now we're going to import this from the real Firebase package. Um, this function now needs a reference to the Firebase app. For this, we can use the get app function. And now everything that I do in here will be directly from the Firebase SDK. Uh, on top of that, we got dependencies in here. Uh, and in here we should set, oh, come on, so many overlays. Uh, we're gonna set persistence to index db local persistent. Once again, from the Firebase auth package. And then we're gonna close this. So now we have made a super simple switch in here and you already start to see the power of this approach right here. Now we could just easily customize those settings, uh, the factories here. And now in the normal case, we'll just return uh, our get auth like we did before. In the other case, we're using a different kind of authentication, uh, which works directly with a Firebase SDK. I'm not 100% sure about the details why it has to be like this, but at least this was the fix to fix your widescreen of doom. And then you're ready. We can upload files. Those files are secured. Um, you can log out, you can log in. So we've covered everything for authentication and file upload. Alright, and that's it for today. I really didn't thought that this video was gonna be like 30-40 minutes, uh, but I really tried to explain every step in detail. So this is really like a beginner's guide to getting started with Ionic, Capacitor and Firebase. Uh, you now have the first steps. You got the login page, you could build another registration page, but the functionality would be the same. Uh, you could add more routes and use the guards that we use to protect your inside area. 
You got a file upload and you even got the first functionality to connect your application to the Firestore database. Check out the other video I did about um, working with collections and documents to see the whole picture and then you're ready to build an epic, uh, epic application with Firebase. I hope you enjoyed this video, of course. If you did, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button. And of course, let me know if there's anything more you would like to know about either uh, the latest version of Firebase or implementing something with Superbase or any kind of cloud backend, maybe social login, maybe completely something else. Just let me know. I will hopefully catch you next week as always. So happy coding, Simon.